Alright, welcome to part two of the uh, PID loop tuning video series. Uh, I'm Abel, the Controls Freak, and uh, you are watching my video from the controlsfreak.com website. Um, right now we left off at a proportional only uh, PID loop, uh, and right now we're going to step it up to a PI loop, which is a proportional and integral loop. Um, if you'll remember, we'll, we set this to 55% uh, relative humidity, and we would notice that the PID loop controller would go to a set amount and in this case it's 43.9 um, and at that point it would stay there if the input didn't move neither did the control loop so now what we're adding in is we want those fine tuning adjustments so that the input will at some point arrive near the set point the desired set point and the way we do that is by adding in the integral proportion so real quick I'm going to make that change here and you'll notice that the loop type is going to change to a PI loop and when that happens, uh, we'll watch our bias here, and it will tend to tick down. So it went from 50 to 49.9, and sh slowly but surely it'll continue to update uh, through a few seconds here. These settings, the, the rate at which the bias is changed, and as you see, the bias changes, so does the control loop. Um, the two settings that we're introducing is the reset rate and the reset band. Uh, and what I'll do here is we'll bring in our little pretty graph to take a look at the various settings here on our graph. So if you'll remember, we already looked at the proportional band and the dead band. Now what we're adding in here is this reset band, which is right here. And typically speaking, I always like to try to make the, whatever the proportional band is, I make the reset band half of that. So in this case, if our proportional band is 80, I like making the reset band half of that, which is 40. So the graph would actually look similar to this right here. You'll have 80 span here and a 40 span for your for your reset band. Now, I know these lines here get a little confusing, but let's go over them one at a time here. Uh, this stays the same where our set point is at. And if you'll notice, the dark black line here is still your controller output going from 0 to 100%. The only thing that we're changing here is the dashed line, which is uh, we're going to call the effective reset rate. Now, the reset rate number that we're using down here is four. So all we're saying is that if your input is, say, this far away from set point, your effective reset rate would be somewhere around 25% of whatever this is, okay? As you get further uh, away from set point, you'll notice the dash line moves up to the very edge of the reset band. So what it tries to do is that reset band says, okay, as you get to the limits of the reset band, I want you to, to continue to give it more speed. I want you to utilize the full rate. Now the reset rate, this four, represents 4% 4 of the bias. Or in this case, since we're using percentages as humidity, I'll move this up just a little bit more here, uh, means that literally if, after one minute, if we are outside this reset band, which is right here at 20% away from set point, because you got to remember we're talking a, a span of 40. So if we're 20% away from set point, we're at the limit of 100 up here, the 1.0. We're going to go ahead and utilize the full reset rate of 4. So this bias, if we waited one minute, would actually move from 50 to 46 uh, after one minute. Now, the logic where the sliding scale here is that obviously if we get closer to it, we don't need to move that quickly. So as we get closer to set point, the effect of the reset rate is diminished. So if it was uh, for moving the bias at 4% in one minute, if I was like right here in the middle, it would probably be more like 2% every minute. And as you get closer and closer to set point, then it'd be 1% every minute until finally you would hit the dead band and dead band pretty much kills the proportional and the integral so as soon as we hit this dead band point which I uh, earlier we were using the point two I'm gonna actually change this to uh, two here and so now I'm gonna say once I hit within two, uh, one percent of the set point because the two represents both sides of the set point when I'm within one percent of the set point I'm gonna go ahead and essentially say I'm not gonna adjust the the CO loop percentage regardless of proportional band or reset. So that there is how the integral proportion slides depending on how closer or further away it is from the set point. All right, let's see this in action now. 
So if you notice, as we were talking, we continue to let the controller continue to tick down and the bias has moved down uh, about, let's say, 5% 5, 5 or 5% relative humidity. Um, and what that relates to is the fact that we are only slightly above set point therefore we're not going to use the full effect of the reset rate that's how come it it's been more than a minute yet it's moved down about uh, four or five percent and the reason why is because of that sliding scale we just talked about we're only five percent away from uh, set point here and we're saying that half of 40 is 20 so we're really only a quarter of the full effect so what it should have been is about one percent every minute and since we've been talking it's been about four minutes five minutes so therefore the five, one one percent every minute has diminished it down to 45 so that's the sliding scale and I also got a little graph here let's see if I can pull that up this graph here if we'll take a look at it we began talking and I had adjusted the, and changed it to a PI loop and it made a, a big jump here and begin to, to continue to adjust trying to go lower um, and then this little tick mark here uh, is pretty much when I had set in that change of dead band because I went from a 0.2 to 2.0. So that was that little jump there. And as we continue to talk, it continues to tick down and tick down and it's waiting to adjust the uh, duct humidity, which is the red symbol. So if I pull this a little bit up higher here, see I'll have to move this to the side. And as we watch the red there, I will now say okay uh, the humidity is going to start to come down because we've been going down from 50% on the valve to 38% so I'm going to make a slight adjustment so I went to 52% and the, the graph is slightly delayed here but you'll see that jump there with the uh, the green line and that is our valve reacting to the CO loop so now the the PID loop is at 41 the whole effect of the integral uh, controller is the fact that it continues to adjust and at a very smooth rate. Uh, with the proportional only, you'll get a back and forth motion. And on the website there on thecontrolsfreak.com, I'm going to post up a, a little robot video I found on YouTube that actually has a little a good visual demonstration of the differences between a P only loop and he used a PID loop, but a PI loop that also does the smooth integral uh, adjustments. Uh, hopefully this has helped you guys out. I'll make sure on the uh, article on the website uh, I give a little bit more uh, uh, information in depth uh, using the example that uh, with the uh, sun coming through the window and uh, giving the fan coil unit uh, dumping some cool air in on the uh, employees in that room. Uh, check out the website, thecontrolsfreak.com, and uh, we'll discuss that a little bit more. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and get my updates. And uh, thanks for all the, uh, the kudos and the pats on the backs. I appreciate it. Um, trying to put some information out there. I know it's slow coming, but uh, we'll get there. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.